So I like sweets. It's my favorite thing to snack on, especially like anything that's sort of mm. sour and chewy. So good. Oof. I could literally crush bags of them every day. Um, but I don't. You know why? Because it would be pretty counterproductive and I prefer not having diabetes. All right, what the hell does eating junk food have to do with collecting cameras? Let me explain. So in today's video, I'll be telling you why I sold pretty much most of my collection, how I've cured myself of gas gear acquisition syndrome, why I've kept the collection that I do have, Some of you may or may not know, but I have a very strong knowledge in sort of general basic fitness and nutrition. Basically, there are no such thing as bad food. There's no such thing, all right? Just bad diets. There's nothing inherently bad about sort of sweets. It's, it's just glucose. It's just, it's just a quick way of getting energy. However, if you get the most of your calories from junk food, you're gonna be pretty malnourished because I won't be getting enough of the good stuff like proteins and vitamins and minerals and fiber. It's not about what you eat, it's about what you eat in total. Mate, you're losing me here. What, what are you talking about? To me, collecting cameras is like junk food. When I first got into film photography, I genuinely wanted to buy every single camera and lens on eBay because I was comparing the film camera prices to that of the modern digital counterparts. For the price of one modern lens, I could get three or four vintage lenses. I thought that was just incredible value. I was enamored by the vintage feel and look of every sort of lens and camera body. The, the construction of it, all of it just gave me all kinds of, of nostalgic feels. Not that I know what the 70s were like. So each new shiny thing that caught my eye on eBay went straight into my basket. And pretty soon, I realized something. I had eight film cameras, if I remember correctly, and a bunch of lenses. However, the problem was that I only used one camera on a daily basis, the Canon A1. I realized that every single camera, every piece of gear requires a lot of love and attention. Yeah, these film cameras are very old. They need to be used. They need all the moving parts need to be moved because if you don't use them, they start to break. When things start to break, you need to pay for them to be serviced or repaired, which costs money. Suddenly, these cameras went from sparking joy to sparking stress. And a lot of them just started gathering dust, honestly, just started gathering dust on the shelf. Just like my favorite chewy sour sweets, the initial joy from collecting cameras quickly faded and you know, you're basically just left with a feeling of dread and regret. So to relieve myself of this burden, this sense of guilt of having to spend more money on gear I don't use, I sold my least used gear, even if I absolutely loved it. The Nikon L35 AF the best point and shoot camera in my opinion i know crazy but it has it's affordable it's retro beautiful it's got one of the sharpest lenses on any point and shoot camera i don't care what you say i sold it though the fuji s645s a supreme medium format camera portable lightweight gorgeous one of the sharpest lenses i've ever used sold it olympus xa Come on, that is a cult classic. It's tiny, it fits in literally any pocket that you have. Sold it. Canon F1, a flagship camera, a legendary camera, but I sold it. Fuji X-Pro2, name a sexier camera, I will wait. It is by far the sexiest camera that has ever graced the planet. Sold it though. I do have one more thing that I need to sell, it is my Canon Scan 9000F. As you, as some of you may know, I am purely a camera scanner now. So if anyone wants a film scanner, please hit me up in the DMs. I want to get rid of it. So how did I cure my gas, my gas, my GAS, my gear acquisition syndrome? I mean, sure, I've sold most of my gear, but it doesn't mean that I can't still be seduced by eBay. You know, I could quite easily relapse. So how did I do it? It's pretty simple, I won't lie. I did so by just readjusting my photography goals. In the beginning, surprise, surprise, I literally wanted to own every single bit of gear that caught my eye. And taking pictures here and there was just sort of like a, 
you know, just sort of like a, a, a happy coincidence that I could do with these cameras as well. Now though, my goals are completely different. I want to become a great photographer. I want to take incredible photos. I want to create, I want to create. I want to people to look at my work and be like, wow, I like that. A surplus of the gear does nothing for those goals. Will a Contax T3 make me a better photographer? Absolutely not. One question that really, really does help me sort of quell that impulse by, can I do what this camera does with the gear that I already have? And 99% of the time, the answer is yes. Do I want a cinema camera? Duh, of course I do. Can I get a similar look with my X-T3 and some vintage glass as I am doing so right now? Uh, also, yes. So I've been talking about the cameras that I have now currently, but this doesn't mean that I want cameras in the future, new cameras in the future. We're into that in a bit. So let's talk about the camera gear that I have now and why I've settled on it. The Canon A1, the Olympus OM1, the Mamiya 645 Super, and one camera that you probably didn't even realize I have is the Canon EOS 5 and just various lenses. I won't get into all of them kind of. In all honesty, I could sell all of these cameras apart from the Canon A1 and be completely satisfied. I'd be, I'd probably be upset for a few weeks, but then I'll get over it and I'll be like, actually, I mean, I know I don't need these other ones. I only really use the Canon A1, but why do I still have these other cameras? One, as backups, you know, the Canon A1 is not, it's not immortal, it could break. So I always like having at least one backup. I know for my sort of shooting style, I prefer having less choice. Every few weeks I like to shoot at least one or two rolls through a different camera just to, just to break up the monotony. I don't need 10 cameras. I just need maybe one or two other cameras to break up that monotony. <sighs> so even though I've been tempted many, many times to sell the OM1, I haven't because I know this is a smart camera to own for longevity for the future because it is a very easily repairable camera it's very easy to repair it because it's fully mechanical there are no electronics in it that can die i have a very hard rule of no electronic film cameras because honestly i just don't see the point on dropping two grand a thousand pounds whatever whatever sum of money on something that can't be fixed anyways the Mimi 605, why do I have that? Well, it's a medium format camera. You just, you can't beat the medium format. Look, it is one of a kind, you know. It's a huge step from, you know, I know it's 605, it's, not, it's only 605. It's still medium format. It's way better than 35 mil. It's better quality. And I like 15 frames over, you know, what is it? 10 frames with six by seven. Um, doesn't mean that I don't want one in the future. I, you know, I, that, that, six, that Pentax 6.7 does, is tempting. But at the moment, I'm very, very satisfied with the 6.45 Super. It's budget and as, if I, if I remember correctly, it is from the 90s. So it's still relatively new compared to, you know, other film cameras. There's still plenty of them about. So because of its pop, because it's still very much abundant um, and it's modular, if any one part were to break, it's very easy for me to just swap out a new part. You know, if the camera breaks, if the body breaks, sick, I'll just get a new body. And you know, I don't have to replace the whole damn thing. And they're still quite affordable, you know? Lastly, the EOS 5. Why do I have this camera? What is this? This is, is this a, what's this? Is this a ugly 5D? What's this, a 5D Mark IV? This is not a film camera. Um, wrong. It's actually an incredible film camera. It is the film camera that you do not want, but it is the one that you should have. <laughs> Let me explain. The EOS 5 or the Canon A2, basically all the 90s sort of DSLR looking film cameras, they outperform any film camera. Like all the film cameras, they are unbelievable in terms of like the, the specs. This one in particular, the EOS 5, has a 1 8,000th of a second shutter speed, so you can shoot Portra 400 in bright daylight with, you know, wide open, f1.8 or whatever. It's got auto wind and auto rewind. It's got auto focus. It's unbelievably nice to hold. That ergonomic, look at that grip. 
that grip is beautiful. It feels amazing in the hand. And it's lightweight and it's cheap as chips at the moment. Well, I got mine for 40 quid. So I got mine really, really good at a really, really good price. That is the best grip on any camera. Look at that. It's the best grip, can't beat it. It's just a better camera if you're just looking at specs. But the reason why people don't care about them, or at least the majority of people don't care about them, is because they don't look vintage enough. It doesn't look like a film camera. It just doesn't, it doesn't give you those nostalgic feels. I think it's only a matter of time before they start looking old enough. And so when people realize how incredible it is and when they start looking vintage enough, I reckon this camera will, well, not skyrocket in price, but it will appreciate in value a lot, in my opinion. So, what are the bits of gear that I'm eyeing up in the future? <laughs> okay, so one of my rules when it comes to gear is that if I get a new piece of gear, I must sell another piece of gear. One in, one out kind of thing. So there are quite a few bits of gear I am lusting over, I won't lie. One is a cinema rig, a run and gun cinema rig, a high res stills camera, and the Fuji X-T4. Um, and also some really proper video lights, but you know, whatever. The reason why I want like a cinema camera and a really good B camera in the X-T4 is because there's nothing that compares to a proper digital, you know, a proper dedicated video setup. You know, there's a reason why people still spend that money on a cinema camera because, yeah, it, although it's just like a minor bump, it, it just it just takes your video quality just just to a level that you know mirrorless cameras just can't do. As I want to create more sort of documentary style videos, like with the Underexposed series, and also the XC4 because of the flippy screen, like. Flippy screen is just game changing. I, I need a flippy screen. I'm, what would I sell in order to make room for it? It would have to be the X-T3 and the X100V. I know, shock horror. I'm probably breaking a lot of hearts by saying the X100V, but you know, one in, one out, right? In terms of a high res stills camera, probably wind some people up and be like, oh, I'm gonna get a lot of eye rolls. I know, it's fine. Probably the Leica M10R, or the Fuji X100S. Am I able to afford either of them at the moment? Absolutely not. Doesn't mean that I can't yearn for one. Why would I get something so ridiculously expensive? Because, or, you know, or just ridiculous resolution? You know, why, do I, why would I need that sort of megapixels? Well, because the further I get into, th into this journey, the more I want to print my work. And printing work is so expensive. So if I'm gonna print my own work, I wanna get like a professional printer, just do it all myself and just save on that cost, really learn the skill of printing and you know, instead of outsourcing it all the time. Because I want to print not, not just to sell, but I want to print as for my own records. So many photos that I just want to print just for myself and just have that archive, that physical archive, you know, just for me. If I have the choice where I don't need to compromise on quality, then why would I, you know? So if I'm gonna get a high res stills camera, I might as well get like the best of the best. If I can afford it, I might as well get the best of the best and have it last me, not just 10 years, 15 years. Cause like the M10R, like Leicas, man, like Leicas hold their value. Say what you like about them. They hold their value and they hold their worth. They, they. Like a Leica from 10 years ago is still a good one now. So if I'm gonna get one, I might as well get the best one and then just ride it out for like 10, 20 years and I can. And the Fuji X100S, I've used the GFX 50R and that was an incredible. It was one of the, those files from the GFX 50R um, when I, you know, when I borrowed the camera from Tom, it's just the best files I've, to be fair, I haven't used that many different cameras, but GFX 50R, best digital files I've ever used, ever seen, ever worked with. Just incredible color depth. And those are the pieces of gear that I, I'm i dreaming of. I can only dream of, to be honest. Um, I'm no way able to afford them, but hopefully in the not too distant future, my crypto investments will, will pay off. And I did make some crypto gains, but I reinvested them. That's the thing, guys. I'm not against collecting gear. I'm just against accumulating gear for the sake of it. Anyways, I mentioned crypto there. Do any of you guys buy, 
by any chance do any of you guys invest in anything if you do let me know in the comments i would love to hear about them that's all guys that's the video subscribe if you haven't already like comment share this with someone you know actually share this with someone who you think might actually enjoy it it will help the channel immensely yeah so with all that said and done keep learning keep shooting i'll see you all in the next one peace